In linear algebra, one of the quantities associated with a square matrix is its determinant. We're going to talk about the determinant in a slightly different way than you might be used to, so it's important to refresh our memories about exactly what the determinant is. And before we talk about the determinant of an m by m matrix, let's first talk about the determinant abstractly as a multilinear form. So we'll give a definition that's going to seem a little bit strange, but we're going to use a lot of the basic ingredients of this definition throughout analysis. So the determinant is a function. And let's say we're going to deal with um, m component vectors. So the determinant of um, m component vectors is a function determinant from an m fold product of m component vectors into the real line. So here there are m factors, and each one of these constituents is r to the m. Satisfying, and again if you'll notice this is a theme throughout the entire course, we're going to specify definitions very often with data, and these data have to satisfy certain conditions. Let's write out what these conditions are. First, this condition is called skew symmetry. And this condition says that the determinant, so here our inputs are m vectors, so let's say we have v1 up to v i, and this is going to get a little bit annoying, so maybe what we can do is um, avoid writing avoid writing too much on the board. So let's write this as vi, vj, vm. So here I've specified uh, two particular vectors in this list, and these should be different. Equals, they could be different, they don't necessarily have to be, is negative of the determinant when I swap these two, vj up to vi. So whenever I swap two of its entries, I'll get negative what I got, um, what I started with. That's the first condition. And again, there's no formula here yet. All we're talking about is what the determinant is abstractly in terms of its properties. So whatever property it has, it should satisfy this, that if we swap any two of its entries, we'll get negative of what we got back, of what we started with. Second important condition is multilinearity. And multilinearity says that for any one of its entries, if I write it as a linear combination, then the determinant actually decomposes as a linear combination as well. So this says that the determinant, and let's single out, let's say, the ith factor. So if I have a v i plus b u i, and then I leave every other factor alone, so I only mess with the ith factor, this is exactly equal to a times the determinant v1 vi up to vm plus b times the determinant of v1 up to, now here I have ui and then vm. So it's multilinear in the sense that it's linear in each coordinate. And the third condition this is called normalization. We can look at a very particular set of vectors to plug into our function. We can look at the unit vectors, the standard unit vectors in Rn. 
So the determinant of the standard unit vectors, we specify this value to be equal to 1. And it's a theorem, in some sense, one has to check this, that it's appropriate to use the word the here again. And the reason is because once I've specified all of these conditions, there's only one function that satisfies all of these properties. And let's now check to make sure that this coincides with the usual definition of determinant that we might be used to for m by m matrices. So we can also define the determinant of an m by m matrix A. So this is an m by m matrix. To be equal to the determinant of, now any matrix is determined by what it does to the unit vectors. So we can apply the unit vectors. And we can use our previous definition. So this is what, it, what our definition of the determinant of a matrix is, an M by M matrix. So now let's check to make sure that this is consistent with our usual definition. So if A is some matrix of the form A1, 1 up to A1M, AM1 up to AMM, this entire matrix is filled with its entries, then the determinant of A, now let's use this definition here, now this matrix acts on the unit vector. So this is actually the determinant of a sum in the first entry. And the sum is exactly where the unit vector gets sent. And let's just draw this to make sure that we get the right thing. So the unit vector in the first one is 1, 0, 0, 0, everywhere else. Where does this vector get sent? Well, matrix multiplication says it gets sent to A11 plus A21 plus A31, and so on. So this gets sent to I1. The first entry is what's varying. And the second entry is this. And that vector will be multiplied by the unit vectors. The first one, the second one, the third one, and so on. So it's going to be EI1. And this is a sum over all I1 from 1 to M. That's just the first entry. Then we go to the next entry and we do exactly the same thing. And let's use different indices to make sure we don't get confused about what sum we're taking. Since they're m such indices, it's convenient to write them like this. And this is the mth vector. So I noticed that it went off a little bit, but the index under E is exactly the same as the first index under A. Now let's use one of the properties that we have for what the determinant should satisfy, and that's multilinearity. If we apply that to each of the entries, we'll bring out the sum every single time. So we get one large sum. And these are also just coefficients, and they come out as well. So AI1, 1, up to AIM, M, and this is the sum over I1 all the way through I M. And each of these go from 1 to M. This is a huge sum if M is large. And then I have the determinant of E I1 up to E I M. So now the question is, what's this expression here? If any one of these appears more than once, what can we do? So imagine that E3 appears twice. E3 appears, let's say, in the fifth coordinate and maybe the 17th coordinate. If we use skew symmetry, we can swap them, and we know that the result is going to be negative of itself. But any number that's negative of itself, the only such number that satisfies that condition is 0. So this sum only includes terms where these don't repeat. So all of these have to be different. And so, and when they are different, what we have is 
E1, for instance, appears once somewhere, E2 appears somewhere, E3, and so on, all the way up to Em, and they all appear exactly once in one position. So those are the only terms that contribute. And what we get is I1 not equal to I2, not equal to, so all of these are distinct, every single one of these. And this, the AI1 stays the same, AIM, M. And so what's the determinant left? Well, what we want to do is we want to swap enough times in this expression so that E1 appears first, E2 appears next, E3 appears, and so on, all the way up to EM. And we'll use skew symmetry every single time we do that. So we swap, we swap, we swap, and each swap we have, we need to remember to keep a minus sign. And in the end, what's the determinant of E1 through EM? It's exactly 1. So this reduces to the sign of a particular permutation of M objects. And it's the sign of the permutation that sends 1 to I1 and M to IM and everything else in between. And if you compare this with the usual formula for the determinant, you'll notice that it's exactly the same as the thing you're used to.